know, I was like, now what? I mean, I, mean, I wish we, uh, when we turned pro, there was a handbook that says, now you're pro. Hear what to do. Hear what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, was, you know, I was like, I had to text Sean and like, hey, so now that I'm a pro, like, what, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had, I had no clue. And um, I think the wake up call for me was my first pro show. I flew all the way to Texas. Don't know why. Should have done something closer in the East Coast. But I heard it was very hard to win in Texas. <laughs> was it the Europa? Yes. Oh boy. I heard it was very hard to win in Texas. And I wanted to see again. For me, it's always about where I fit in. And so I, I flew all the way to Texas to do the Europa. And that year, I remember it was it was a good lineup. Cedric McMillan was making his pro debut. Uh, Mark Alvisi, uh, Bill Wilmore, uh, Joel Stubbs. Wow! I mean, it was a crazy lineup. Uh, Jeff Lawn, Gregory. I mean, it was like it seemed like everybody was doing the Texas show, and. Uh, I wasn't much bigger than I was in North America, to be honest. I think I was like 225 pounds. <laughs> Still. You know, but I was excited. I was like, I'm going to make my pro debut. And um, I got a wake-up call of what it was to be a pro bodybuilder. Because when I got there, again, I think there's only one show in my entire life that I wasn't in the last group of guys. And that was when I did National with Food Poison and placed 14. So here I am, excited that, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm a pro. Okay, let's see what's out here. And I remember first call out, second call out, third call out. <laughs> Fourth call out. <laughs> I'm standing on. <sighs> you know that smile get a little bit smaller and smaller. Fifth call out. The rest of you guys step forward. That was my group. Holy crap! And uh, I was like, holy shit! So um, this is what it's like being a pro, like. But I remember, I remember looking at these guys and I'm thinking, you know, like, um, what does these guys have that I don't? And um, I flew back home and I quit bodybuilding because I realized, again, bodybuilding wasn't for me. I didn't want to be a pro bodybuilder. I think I was still just on that high from coming back and, you know, feeling great and, you know, doing two shows and had the great result and I'm just going to ride this, you know, wave of energy into my pro debut and, and see what happened. Um, but it, it was a wake up call for me because I remember, you know, watching the other guys, how they pose, their presentation, uh, how they looked. And I was like, oh, that's, that's not me. Like, you know, I, I wasn't there. I look okay, but it wasn't me. And um, I got home and I was like, uh, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> I was like, I only wanted to do one show anyway. Um, I got it, yeah, I got a pro card, but again, now what? So I quit. I think that Yopra was in July. I did not go to the gym until I think March. Oh, wow. <laughs> you really quit. I quit. I mean, I had to literally pull myself away from bodybuilding. Like, do I really want to do this? I didn't want anything to do with the gym. Like, I was like, you know, if, if I was going to be a bodybuilder, I realized like, what the sacrifice has to be to be a pro bodybuilder. Bodybuilding is a very selfish, selfish sport. And I, I was like, I can't do this. Like, you know, it was fun, but, I'm done. 
during my time off, I, a uh, buddy of mine, Frank Stetson, uh, from New Jersey, I was like, you know, I, I guess I need to find somebody to work with. He goes, if I'm going to do this, and he says, there's a guy here in California, his name is Dave Kalick, why don't you give him a call? I'm like, so I called Dave up and sent him some pictures. He called me and he started talking and he gave me a headache and I hung up. <laughs> that sounds like Dave. <laughs> I was just like, I don't want to do this, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I called him like the next day and I was like, again, it's a sacrifice that you have to make to be a pro bodybuilder. And I'm listening to Dave and I was just like, all right, I'm gonna do one more show and I'm gonna see what happened. And I was like, I wanna go back to Texas. I have to redeem myself. <laughs> and um, he's like, yeah, yeah, you'll be ready. And I'm like, okay, it's April. Europe is in August, I think, at the end of July. He goes, yeah, yeah, you'll you, you be great, you'll be ready. I'm like, so I trained, trained, trained. I did everything different from what I've done in the past couple of shows and went to Texas and qualified for the Olympia. And I was ecstatic. I was just like, the first time I was ever afraid of being on stage was the Olympia. Because here I am, third pro show, I'm standing backstage and I'm looking at all these guys that I consider to be like superstars of bodybuilding, icons of legends, and been in a magazine, I've been in magazine covers, you know, won the Olympia. And I'm standing backstage, just kind of like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> You know, like Jay Cutler, like, you know, Dexter Jackson, Dennis Wolf, Kai Green, Branch Warren. Like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, and to one thing, and this is the reason why I have the utmost respect for Jay. I'm standing there trying to get some Gatorade. And my mind is in the left field. He could just <laughs> duke it out of here. <laughs> and Jay walked over and he says, how does it feel, man? And I'm like, good. He goes, just take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, just, just take it all in, man. Just take it all in. And I'm like, he could like, tell me to just relax and take it all in. <laughs> okay, he goes, you're going to be here many more times after this. I'm like thinking, yeah, right. Like, this is it. Like, you know, but for some strange reason, that relaxed me. Because I'm like, if Jay Cutler could see a timid, scared little kid, <laughs> you know, standing there and could come over and say, hey, listen, man. You're gonna be here many more times. So just Jake cut look at his face, you know, and I'm like, okay, just relax. Okay. And you know, I remember standing when they called me in to walk out of the stage, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, you know what? I think of all the guys that worked their butt off ever since they started lifting the weight, just to make it to the Olympia. As like here I am, third pro show like and then this overwhelming feeling just came over me where I literally wanted to cry because I'm like, man, you know, it's like thinking about all the guys that have graced the Olympia stage and were able to call themselves an Olympian. And I'm like, I'm, I'm one of those guys. Like if nothing else ever happened in, in my bodybuilding career, I could say at least one time I was an Olympian. I was on stage an Olympian. And... I went out on stage and it was like the calmest I've ever been. I just went out and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. Nobody expected me to be here. You know, I didn't expect me to be there. So, you know, I just went out there and I just, I enjoyed myself. I was like, you know, but I think if it wasn't for Jay, I would have probably scared myself with anxiety and flattened out. <laughs>
And I just went out there and um, enjoyed myself. I had a great time. And I think that was one of my favorite Olympia moments uh, because it was something that was unexpected. And um, I never really wanted to be Mr. Olympia to Jay Cutler again. <laughs> you gotta tell that story. Oh man, you know. Thanks, Jay. This for guy ruining my life. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I was okay being me. <laughs> You're still you, Sean. But um, you know, I started working with Chris after coming back from Germany. And the advice of Charles Glass telling me, "Hey, I need to find somebody to understand how my body works." You know, it was great working with Dave Kelly. And a lot of fun, and Dave is very knowledgeable. Dave is a walking encyclopedia. Anybody that knows Dave <sighs> will understand what I'm saying. <laughs> He's a talking book. <laughs> Dave will tell you everything from the beginning of time and creation. How it was. He's like, yeah, you need to under, you need to find somebody to understand your physique. And I was like, okay, Charles. And you know, we've decided. Hey, you know what? You know, Chris Cedar was the guy, and. You know, I got in touch with Chris, and Chris was like, send me some pictures. <laughs> okay. You know, he sent pictures to Chris, and, you know, first week I got my diet, I was excited, but I had to go to the Europa show in Orlando. And uh, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, I'm hungry, can't sleep, you know, just got back, I think it was from Brazil, and, uh, I'm in this restaurant and I remember Jake Cutler, Mark Anthony came walking in. And they were like, hey, Sean, come over and join us. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, why do I always seem to run into Jake? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I ran into Jay when I turned pro. The first show I went to after I turned pro, Jay was, Jay was guest posing. So we had this long talk. At the Olympia, we had this talk. Here I am, about to embark in this other chapter of my life, and who comes walking in? <laughs> Jay Cutler. So, I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, Jay, I just started working with Chris, and I know, you know, the extra and Chris, and I'm so excited. He goes, man, Sean, your life is going to change. It's going to change. I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean? He goes, the hardest part about working with Chris is pictures. Pictures, 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 pictures. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so pictures. We were sitting in this restaurant for maybe about two hours because I think Jay had like a 5 a.m. flight or something like that. And he didn't want to go to sleep. He was like, and I'm just going to stay up and then just go straight to the airport. So we're sitting here and he says, with his look in his face, so... You want to be Mr. Olympia? I mean, it kind of caught me off guard because I'm thinking it never really crossed my mind that I want to be Mr. Olympia. You know, just gonna, I just turned pro. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> the best I've done was 11th at the Olympia. Like, you know, he's like, no, no, no. Do you, do you want to be Mr. Olympia? And I'm like, um, never thought about it. He goes, no. Do you want to be Mr. Olympia? I'm like, I guess so. And he had this look in his face like, wrong answer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Do you want to be Mr. Olympia? I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to be Mr. Olympia. He goes, well, now's the time to start acting like Mr. Olympia, talking like Mr. Olympia, walking like Mr. Olympia. Now's the time that you have to be Mr. Olympia before it happens. I'm going to tell you, that was the best speech anybody has ever given me. Because that moment, I remember, it's like I switch went off. I'm like, oh shit, I can see the big picture. I could be Mr. Olympia. Like, I've been on stage at the Olympia. Like, I was at the door, and all I need to do is just turn the knob and walk through. And I was just like, okay, yeah, I want to be Mr. Olympia. And... I remember the entire 2012, for the rest of 2012, I trained like I've never trained before, like, like a freaking madman. I was possessed because I'm like, if Jay Cutler, Mr. Ambassador, 
could stand here and look at me and ask me, hey, you know what? Do I want to be Mr. Olympia? Like, why, why couldn't I see that? And I remember I was just like, you know what? Why not? If not me, then who? <laughs> and I went from 11th to 3rd that year at the Olympia. Wow. And the one thing that pisses me off to this day was I walked over to shake Phil hand. And he says, I know what you're thinking. I know what's going through your mind right now. I'm like thinking, no, you don't, dude. I just, I just won the lottery. Yeah, like, man. I went from 11 to third, dude. Like in one year. I was like, and you're actually, you telling me you know what I'm thinking? And I think ever since then, I was like, I'm gonna be Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew. <laughs> I was like, you know what, like. I, I was just happy to be here. Like, you know, I didn't want to be a number on the stage again. And I went from 11 to 3rd. And I'm shaking Kai's hand. I've known Kai since 98, 99. And I went over, and Phil has a smug look in his face going, I know what you're thinking. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, okay. And I think that moment I tattooed his name on the inside of my highlight. Because I was like, and I'm, you know, I'm, congratulations with, you know, being okay with me. And I remember we went to, we went to the press conference on Sunday, and I'm sitting there. I'm in, I'm in La La Land at this point. I'm just kind of like, listen, you know what? I nobody could tell me I didn't win the Olympia, even though I got third. You know. And I'm sitting next to Tony Freeman, and um, somebody get, get up and they're talking to ask a question, and they say, you know, so Phil, what do you think about Jake coming back next year? And um, Phil was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I gotta worry about Jay, you know, Jay's coming back, you know, I gotta worry about Dexter Jackson. You don't worry about Tony Freeman, Dennis Hull, Branch Warren. He named every single person that was competed in the Olympia <laughs> but me. Really? <laughs> and I didn't care. I was just kind of sitting there like, hey, you know what? I, I could retire today. I got third. Like, nobody expected this. And I remember this kid from Germany stood up and he goes, what about Flexitron? And he goes, yes! <laughs> He's on my radar. I know who he is. And I'm like, well, you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I forgot like, about him. I was just like, wow, you know who I am. I've been sitting here all morning. Like, you named every guy that competed in the last two Olympia. <laughs> but for me, I was like, okay. And um, I think the next year and a half or two, every opportunity that Phil had, he trashed me on social media. <laughs> And I'm talking like full blown, like whatever it was. Like if you say, "Hey, Phil, what about Sean Block?" Well, yes, everybody loved the new guy. <laughs> and um, but I was just—I I told myself after that, like you know what, Jay is right. Like I want to be Mr. Olympia, and whatever it takes, you know, whatever I need to do to get there, I, I will sooner or later, sooner than later, and. Um, just a matter of you know putting the pieces together uh, at the right time and you know it's quite evident that last year um, we're a lot closer than most people you know would want to give us credit and you know we're it's going to be a very exciting year um possess and you, know, you guys know i have a nine month old daughter now and you know, that gives me a little bit more purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer just doing this for myself. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, <laughs> uh, Mr. Olympia. And hopefully, Phil, I don't have a case bill yet. You're going to have to have something for the stand out. But, um, yeah. <laughs> 
at my house in Florida, I have a wall cut out recess and I put 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Mr. Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool, man. <laughs> well, Sean, I, just I know y'all got your panties a bunch now. I go, Sean's talking trash about Phil. No, man, I, I think care. it's good. This is this is candid <laughs> talk. I, I, man, I can't tell you how how great this is for the fan to have you have us in your home and uh, talk about all this because this is what I wanted to get on the last episode. You know, we, we've seen you train, and it's always motivating to see you train and learn what Charles is giving you to do, but this, you have a lot to say, man. People will say, oh, Sean's quiet. You're not so quiet once you open up, and this is really good. You it's know, good. I've, you know I've, I've always pride myself on, I love the sport of bodybuilding. I love, you know, anyone that's a professional athlete and what they're able to accomplish when they're constantly, uh, you know, being put under a spotlight. And um, so I've always made my home, my sanctuary, where I can come home and I leave everything outside the door. Where I was like, you know, if just for one moment, you know, not thinking about, oh my God, I gotta lift some weights. Oh my God, I gotta diet. Oh my God, I gotta do this, you know. You know, just for one moment to just say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna walk across the street to the grocery store without thinking about bodybuilding or, you know, I wanna go to the movies or whatever it is. So, you know, I've always just kind of give enough where I could still remain human or remain sane. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, you know, to give you know, people a little bit more insight as far as who is Sean Roden? Yeah. I'm just a goofball. <laughs> and uh, one sec, well, since you guys are in my house, but I can't get rid of Dave. <laughs> He's trying, guys. He's trying, but I, I'm relentless. <laughs> As you guys can see, that's my address. I'm blocking out, but wow. I know. I think Kai got his too. I'm signing mine. I'm not signing Kai's though. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually going to sign it this year. So they want you to initial there. Initial there. I know I should be reading it, but I'm the same you contact. Signed, you signed a few, yeah, that's okay. Initial there. Oh, wait. They say right here, if I sign this contract, I will be Mr. Olympia. 20... Oh, cool. We signed it quick then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what yours say, um, but mine says that if I sign my name here, This is the 22nd day oh, yeah. of April. Yeah. Of April. So you guys were the first one to see this. Oh, you gotta hold that contract. Let me see, let me see. Wow. That is tight. I did it, Ma! Very cool. <laughs> so, Very to cool. Cytic Nutrition, thank you guys. I know, they're great. This is this whole series was was because of them and Muscle Insider, and I'm so grateful we got to do this. Uh, it was very uh, generous of them and all the whole team over there. Definitely. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sean.